now let us hear from the private uh, point of view, Vishal Lok Rai. Uh, I had a short uh, PowerPoint made out, which I am told just now that uh, it doesn't operate from this um, laptop. Never mind. I, I'll speak it up because we have five minutes. Um, first thing first, uh, we mentioned a term called ZNA, and over two and a half years um, we have had a lot of analysis, discussion, deliberation, and it's uh, still going on. Now. 18th of uh, August, the Ministry of Power in Delhi had a huge, huge uh, meeting. Uh, so much so that I think um, it was attended by all states and all stakeholders. Some 90 people were seated and to my mind another 30 were outside uh, waiting and um, Mr. Nagi was there. Now, why I refer to that meeting is um, you would get to see uh, two slides that I have picked up from there quoting the source, they go on to say that um, right now, out of, let's say, 250,000 megawatts, we are meeting a peak of about 130, 140,000 megawatts. The aggregate uh, generation capacity is shown uh, to be double in next uh, seven years or so, and then in another seven, eight years, double. So it's quadrupled over next 15 years. So by 2030, you get to see four times the generation capacity, which is a modest view of hydro. But what is also shown alongside is that the load met, there is a disparity. The 60% gap that we get to see now between the highest peak that we have met out of the uh, installed capacity, the 60% gap is maintained till 2030. Now, here comes the significance of providing of transmission. Now, what do you do? Now, if you simplistically put, if the states are to draw a 100 megawatts and you have a 170 megawatt seated somewhere, um, what do you make the transmission for? There, of course, it is too. So, GNA takes a lot of significance in terms of transmission planning. Multiplicity of authority or missing authority is one thing we can talk about till cows come home. But we have too much of democracy, so in that, we'll keep talking. But uh, alongside, we need to work. I must put on record the extremely good work that has been done on transmission side in the last few decades. I used to be a system operator in the most troubled region of the country, which is the northern region. And uh, in my poor English, I can say the most indisciplined grid uh, at one point of time. Uh, so I was there. Uh, my uh, uh, senior colleague, Professor uh, Chaturvedi, uh, they felt uh, fit one uh, midnight after the minister that did a ragging that I should take over northern grid. I did. And then uh, I didn't know. Uh, it was that Avivanyu Chakravyo Me Gusna. So it was terrible. At that point of time, interesting part is right from the tip of South India till the tip of North India and across west to the east, we used to have hugely deviated grid parameters. If I quote, my friends would be there, I'm sure, a practicing engineer. Bangalore, 400 kV, bus voltage, 355 kV, running, not dead, running. Frequency, 47.6, 47.8. Highest frequency seen, 48.2. Closer to Delhi, to the capital, Mandola, Dadri, Pallavgad, voltage 360 kV. In Delhi, no tube lights would uh, you know, work immediately in the evening. We'll have to wait till uh, some time, till, till uh, you know, uh, the voltage improves. From that scenario, and carrying 
up to about 800 every year from distant generation like Singroli, etc., to Delhi. From that scenario, the planners, the providers, power grid itself, all the um, RLDCs put together, have done a great job to bring the country through a situation where you do not doubt the parameters here. That's a, that's a great job that has been done. So we are now out of a shaky platform and we are on a relatively steadier platform. From here on, we need to do the right thinking, go on and build a system for ourselves, providing for the economics that comes along with it. Now, in that, the role of the regulator is going to be very, very significant because in generation, you could count it by the number of megawatts in hundreds of them and the location as to where the generation should come and you could probably talk it out in form of who could be the buyers, etc. And then, of course, divide it into, you know, long term, blah, blah, uh, and then you could have a merchant station also. That's something we will not touch right now. But for transmission, there is nobody who is going to tell you that let's build a transmission for so many megawatts. No. It has to be that. Now, let, let, let's see. With more provision of transmission, the costlier power will get displaced and they would be retarded. Cheaper power will pick up. Imagine if we had an infinite transmission, meaning you have open <coughs> access from any point to any point for any quantum of power, then you will have the right merit order coming. We are nearing that. So even as we look at the um, challenges, the point is that we have made a good beginning now. This has to be realized. And on this confidence, we have to build on. In that, the regulators will have to be looking at right from you know the planning steps that have been taken the agencies that are being involved, institu the institutions that are uh, concerned with this, and finally, of course, the pricing, sharing formula, etc. In that, a lot of work is going on. In GNA, I'll quickly finish. My uh, take is that you, we must have the higher GNA number corresponding to the max generation at the node or in the state, and the lower GNA number for the state draws. For example, Punjab, for the paddy season, they intend to draw for that season those extra thousand megawatts. Now the system should be capable of handling that. But the generation, the aggregate generation at the other end, would be much higher than that. So if you have a 10,000 megawatt scenario for generation, you could as well have a 7,000 megawatt scenario in form of draw as GNA. The costing, the sharing of transmission will have to be accordingly done. I have dealt with that somewhat in two, three slides that the organizers will share you with. And uh, with that, um, I wish the country a very big and very bright future. Thank you.